five things I loved about traveling in Zanzibar and five things I really didn't love about traveling in Zanzibar coming up. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Christine with Where in the World is Seattle and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. The intent behind this video is to help you plan ahead for your Zanzibar trip so you can have the best trip possible and it really is a phenomenal island. So let's start with the things that I love. Number one is the diversity of the island. There are three main sides that you can travel on. You have Nungui in the north where you can find beautiful beaches, a lot more of the larger format resorts, and then on the east side you can find Jambiani and Page where it's amazing for water sports and is a much more pole pole chill laid back vibe and then you have so much culture in Stonetown which is a really neat place to get lost in the alleyways so I love the diversity of this island and by the way I have individual videos about each of these places if you want to dive into each spot Number two is the beaches, which obviously the beaches are beautiful. It's an island, but what's really unique about Zanzibar are the extreme tides. It creates a phenomenal visual between high tide and low tide. And one of the things you cannot miss are the sunsets and my two favorite spots to catch the sunset. One is at Kendwa Beach. Kendwa Rocks is a really fun resort to go grab drinks at and watching the sunset on this beach really is phenomenal. The second one is on the other side of the island. You're watching the sunset over the water, over the land, but the extreme tides at K Beach and K Funk Beach Bar, super fun. And it becomes a dance party at night. You can't miss these two. Number three is the amount of culture and history on this island. Stonetown is a UNESCO site. There are Maasai people all over over the island and there are experiences that you can have that can really immerse you into Tanzanian culture and you can learn more about the history of Zanzibar. It's a really phenomenal place that has a lot of interesting history. And even if you just want to learn more about Tanzanian food, I loved experiences like going to Emerson Tea House where they have a set menu and they will walk you through each dish and some of the information and history behind each of the foods that's being served to you. This next one I love because I love adventure. The amount of water sports on this island is super, super fun. You have on the John Biani Page side, you have kite surfing, you have the ability to ride bikes on the beach, there's scuba diving in the north. Nungui was my favorite place to get into the water, but the amount of water sports here super fun this next one is the prices it is very very affordable to travel in zanzibar right now i'm in oahu in case you want to come to the other side of the world to a beautiful beach i have tons of videos on this spot but as a point of reference i will just compare some of the prices of zanzibar last month versus oahu right now i traveled to zanzibar in february 2021 and it was high season and i was booking everything days before arriving there. So to give some perspective around prices, I paid around 80 to $120 for the hotels that I stayed at, again, in high season, which is a really great rate versus, I mean, Oahu during low season, I paid $120 a night for a really not so nice place. Another example is activities, scuba diving in Nangui. I paid $100 for two scuba dives out there. The same dives in Oahu would have cost me $150. When it comes to food in Zanzibar, I was paying anywhere from $10 on the low side to $30 for really nice meals with drinks per person. In Oahu, $30 will barely get you lunch without any drinks. Which by the way, if you want my full Zanzibar itinerary, click the link in the description below. All right, let's jump to talking about the five things I didn't really love about Zanzibar and it, it starts with the prices. And tell me in the comments below what kind of traveler you are. Are you the type of traveler that loves a good negotiation? Or are you the type of traveler that really just wants the posted price? For me, I. I'm okay with haggling, but I don't want to do it every single time I want to do anything. And one of the things that is a challenge in Zanzibar is the prices vary based off of what you look like and what they think they, they can get out of you. And again, relative to other places I've traveled, it's so affordable, even if you're paying at the high end. But 
for me, it's never a good feeling that I just know the person next to me is paying half the price that I am for something like taking a private boat out to Numba Island to go snorkeling in the water. We paid this very affordable rate to go do this activity, but we also know that we were paying significantly more than other people and the original price that they were trying to get us was this. So that's just one example of something I didn't really love. The second thing I didn't really love is the amount of hawkers on this island. And what I mean by that is because tourism is the main way that people on the island make money, you are constantly, constantly being sold something. And if you just want to go for a walk on the beach or sit down and watch the sunset for just a second, you can't do it without somebody constantly trying to sell you something every two seconds. And it's just... It gets exhausting after a while, constantly asking people to leave you alone. And for some people, it doesn't bother them at, at all. But for me, it was really difficult to do anything on this island without constantly being approached. And the other thing about it is that I also was just exposed to a lot of scams. And so if you've made it this far in the video, I have a secret video that I'm making that it's not about exposing these scams, but just talking about my experiences and what I saw because the intent behind these videos, I loved Zanzibar, but this video is to help you travel smarter to the island. This is the video I wish I got to watch before I went there. That's what I'm trying to do here. And if you can understand that, click the link below and tell me you want that video and I'll send it to you. Maybe I'll make it available to everyone. Most people on YouTube don't understand that this comes from a good place. Okay, let's talk about the next one. All right, this next one I didn't really love is up for debate. I had some really phenomenal experiences with the food. For example, you cannot miss eating at the Rock restaurant. So amazing. I also loved eating at the Fisherman at the Double Tree in Nangui. But there were so many times I'm using TripAdvisor's top rated restaurants or Google's top rated restaurants. And I had a lot of meals that were not that great. I've been hearing the food hyped up in Zanzibar so much. And you know what? I haven't had a good meal yet. And this island, really adopts the pole pole island style life in which meals take hours. I could never have a sit down meal that didn't take at least two hours. So my recommendation for you is don't show up hungry. Just go to the restaurant and then you will get hungry while you're waiting. Okay, let's talk about the next one which is getting into the ocean. The ocean, because of the extreme tides, can be insanely beautiful and calm and can also be really, really, really rough. And you know, it's the ocean, obviously it's gonna do that, but be aware and a helpful tip for you is just know the tide calendar and when the tide is in or out. Because of those extreme tides, you can get extremely beautiful water or extremely rough water. And I wish that I was watching that more closely before I would do things like get on a boat. This last one just comes from it being a underdeveloped island and that's fine, but be aware that one of the things that I didn't love is that service and Wi-Fi generally suck on this island. And a helpful tip that I gave in my Zanzibar overview video is that getting a SIM card specific to the island versus Tanzania mainland will help you to have better service. But a lot of the places, a lot of the resorts a lot of the hotels out here don't have the best Wi-Fi connection, so just something to be aware of. And the other thing that would be helpful is I personally would not drive on this island myself. I was really thankful to have a driver because a lot of the roads, especially near the beach, are very underdeveloped. And also because using GPS is not exactly uh, easy on this island, having a driver is something that can combat that. Whew, Zanzibar, I loved it. I have so many videos about the island. Make sure you check the link in the description below and also check that link in case you want that that secret video, it might be interesting. I'm here every week with new videos. I'm gonna go enjoy Oahu and I'll see ya in the next adventure. Ciao.